Jim Codrington. We're here at Holy Angels Catholic Church to help them turn a bare basement into a usable space for the congregation and the community. The previous building was destroyed by fire and everybody pulled together to rebuild it. And we're gonna have to pull together again if we want to finish the Holy Angels basement in just 48 hours. It's divine, it's divine. Restoration. It's divine. Catholic Church is in Bronzeville, in Chicago's famous South Side. This is the heart of the inner city where crime and drugs and gangs are rampant. But through it all, Holy Angels has remained a positive force for 125 years. They've welcomed African Americans to worship for 65 years, long before many other Catholic churches did. And now the congregation is as diverse as the community around it. Holy Angels is also famous for its new building. Let's take a look. The church uses this huge basement for choir practice, meetings, and also for helping the community. The volunteer kitchen regularly serves hundreds of meals down here. The room is plain and unattractive, and the concrete floor is cold. This place really needs a divine touch. Father Bob Miller is the priest at Holy Angels. Our church, as this community has changed over the last 60 or 70 years, is really like a beacon for this community. It's continued to keep its membership strong. Mm -hmm. People who uh, used to live in the neighborhood, move out to the southern suburbs, they still come back here. Right, and there's a whole lot of development going on in the area. How are you involved with the housing projects here? We're very intimately involved because the neighborhood is changing quickly. Mm -hmm. It's gentrifying, and that's a good thing. It's, it's displacing people, that's not so good. What we felt we had to do was really work for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So eight and a half years ago, I helped begin a housing corporation here called Genesis Housing Development Corporation. We built 24 single family homes to this day, and three of them are our parishioners. One of them is working here right now today, actually. See, churches have got to be about the building up of the communities. Mm -hmm. It's not just getting people to heaven. You've got to rebuild the neighborhoods and rebuild the kingdoms here on earth. And that's why our motto for our housing corporation is re-neighboring the community. Right. And that's really what we're all about here. Catherine's right. This floor is a disaster and covering it is job number one. We've called on Formal Flooring, who've agreed to donate 5,000 square feet of a new type of linoleum to cover the old concrete. This is Tom from FloorTech. He's installing the floor that Forbo donated to this particular project. How's it going, Tom? Real well today. Yeah, it's a wonderful floor. Yes, it is. The uh, linoleum box is a very nice product to be using. Okay, now linoleum, is this the same stuff that we used to use decades ago? Yes, it's a product that is now coming back in more designer-friendly colors. Got it, and I thought you were kind of overlapping by about one inch when you were laying down the rolls. When we roll them out, we overlap each seam about an inch. When we put it into the adhesive, it tends to shrink a little bit. Okay. So that way when they're overlapped, we can trim them so when it does set the adhesive, yeah. they'll be nice and tight together. Sounds like a little bit of a complicated process. Is this the kind of thing that you'd want to do at home yourself? It's a little bit tricky to install. It's not your average do-it-yourself type project. Will it be easy to maintain? Throw a couple coats of wax on it. 40 years from now, you know, my grandchildren will be walking on the floor. I hope they will. And so you're telling me we will definitely be done by the time Sunday Mass rolls around? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I like that little hesitation. but then Look over the shoulder. Yeah, exactly. We will be done. Most of this restoration will be done by church volunteers, but laying this amount of flooring is a job for experts. Not only will it be done right, but it will be done fast, and that's just as important because we've got a lot to do in just 48 hours. Okay, so the floor is really coming along and we can move on to the painting. Now, when you're painting, you will notice that there are codes on the wall, okay? Those codes correspond to paint colors, so Trent, I want you to make sure that you remind guys that only the proper color goes on the proper wall, okay? Okay. 
We've got some cabinets that are going to be built by the college volunteers. They're gonna go over there. And lastly, how are we come along with ripping out those stalls in the washroom? They're okay? Yeah, they're probably coming along pretty good. We're gonna be finished in time? Sure. Okay, that's a promise? That's a promise. Good, all right. We gotta get busy, guys. Let's go, let's go. Right. We need lots of furniture to fill that basement, but ordering over the phone isn't so easy. Thin beige. All right, it's 894A. No, not rolled legs, rolled arms. B-L-U, yeah, for blue. Okay, we've got... 821. It's got three cushions and a rolled arm. Oh, sorry, here, right, it's two, two, sorry. Dash four five. And the rolled arm, you got it. That's the one. So we're here with Leroy, who's our head volunteer and the man coordinating this massive project. How's it going, Leroy? Oh, it's going very well. Everything seems to be coming together right on schedule. Good, you think that we're actually gonna be done in time? Yeah, I believe so. And I've seen you really working around, like you're like a man on fire. This is a real labor of love for you, isn't it? Yeah, I, mean, I love my church. Okay. And it's an honor to do this. I mean, if someone is gonna give you something, then it's the parishioners that have to step up to do the work. Okay, does the whole project have any kind of emotional significance for you or? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. How so? Um, well, I guess because Father Bob, when he brought it to me, uh, mm -hmm. it was the day after my son's funeral. Father Bob and I kind of laughed that here comes uh, a project that requires uh, managing, and that's what I do, and it's my type of work, and it's a time where I really need to keep busy. And that's what's really propelling you through this whole project? Yes. That's, that's what's keeping me going. And I think you'll be happy. I think so. I think it's a beautiful thing to see a lot of the people from the parish and a lot of people from the community come in and try to get the church to the way they want to see it looking. Every son I look for coming in. There's a real community spirit in this church. Even the kids are helping out before choir practice. You know, if you could just get around that outlet, that'd be really good, because we can't get that perfect. There's a chemical smell in the air, and I'm sending everyone out until I discover what it is. Time may be tight, but safety has to come first. On Chicago's South Side helping Holy Angels Church help the people in their community. It's halfway through day one and Jim and the volunteers are renovating the huge church basement. Installing a new floor, renovating the washrooms, and giving the whole place a new coat of paint. Hey Catherine, yeah. you remember that problem with the smell? Yeah. Well, I talked with the flooring guys and they assured me that we got nothing to worry about at all. Everything's safe. Great. Well, I'll go round up the volunteers then. Oh, you know what? I already took care of that. <laughs> You're so quick. Thank you. We're back on track. And a good thing because we've only got a day and a half left to get this done. It's time to meet Rex Alexander, the youth leader here at Holy Angels. One of the problems I've always seen in society is that society does not spend a lot of time and energy and effort on the youth. Um, it's a bit different here at Holy Angels because Holy Angels is dedicated um, and has given back to making sure the youth has a place um, for the youth in our community, in our church community. We have after school programs, we have uh, an entire athletic program, um, we have a uh, musical program in the school and then over here we have uh, actually a youth choir so uh, that's our big youth ministry here in the church. And tell me about uh, your choir. Well the choir is made up um, really ranges from eight years old to the oldest girl being 23. Oh. Uh, she's my daughter. Okay. <laughs> um, it's interesting people come to visit Holy Angels Church and when they see the choir they then want the choir to come to their church or their parishes. Uh, we go in and do a full gospel mass at these churches it's a rowdy way to praise our Lord Jesus Christ. Carpentry students from the local community college are helping out by building cabinets for us. 
We decided to partake in this project as a community affairs effort. A chance to get our skills to work for. You guys 48 hours is a real task for these young people, but we're going to do our best. As you can see, we've been applying our baseboard and we come to what constitutes a challenge, a corner. Now your normal inclination when you come to a corner would be just cut one length to here, glue it on, and then start a new length. Resist that temptation. But what we actually want to do is go around the corner with our corner piece. But well, then when you do that, you say, but Jim, look at that, it bulges around. That can't be good. And you're absolutely right. What we need to do is create a bendable seam right at the corner. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Basically, what you do is you butt it up to your last piece, and you just score it to the corner length like that. And here's the real secret. What you do is you go an eighth of an inch past the corner. You use the vinyl as a straight edge. Just cut along like this. Just score it. Don't cut all the way through. And then you've got the beginnings of your seam right there. Then you just use your knife and you cut along that seam. You'll see that what we've created is a bendable seam. So, put it up to the corner and look at how tight that corner is. Challenge surmounted. We're here in the main sanctuary of the church. Um, as I understand it, the church burnt down originally. Mm -hmm. Tell me a bit about the new design of the building. And it was an award-winning architectural design. It's a really unique structure they have yes. up here supporting the roof yes. area. The mural as well is this a great is site. Fantastic. Yes. The name of our church is Holy Angels. And every one of those portraits on there is some scripture quote in the Bible that has to do with angels. It's very visually uh, different to yes. most Catholic churches that yes. you would be in. But yeah. the service is also, you're saying. We have the same basic structure, but we do it in a very spirit-filled, charismatic kind of a way. Mm -hmm. It takes two hours. I tell people, take off your watch, you're going to be here for a while. <laughs> it's kind of the whole African-American heritage, or the history of Sunday being the day that you set aside for community, for family, for fellowship, for worship. And that really continues on here, which is why that basement space is so important for us, because it's a real gathering place for our community. It's late Friday night and some volunteers are staying late to help us get this job done on time. Okay, here's where we're at. The floor is almost finished. The painting's coming along nicely. We've got the pieces for the bathroom stall, but they still need to be assembled, and that's gonna take some time. And I've still got some unfinished business with those cabinets. Hey, Jim, what yeah. happened to the team? Well, a very good question, Catherine. School's out, so all of the kids who did such a great job so far aren't here. And we've still gotta put up shelves, we've gotta put up doors, we still need hardware, we still we need, need paint. Help. We need help. You know what time. the problem is, is that this is a huge space. There are no volunteers running around right now looking for something to do. You've gotta create one. Create a volunteer. Just pull it out of your magic hat, Catherine. I know you can do it. Just one man. This is going to be a challenge. Everybody is busy. Where am I gonna find a volunteer to help Jim? It's Saturday, day two at Holy Angels Church on Chicago's south side. We're working with them to renovate their basement and we've got 19 hours left to get it done. Painting is going well and Catherine has found Sean, a great volunteer, to help finish the cabinets. This is Sean, he's a Top Gun who's been brought in to finish off these cabinets. How is it going, Sean? Well, that's a slow go, but it's gonna happen. Now, what's your association with Holy Angels? Uh, I've been coming up to Holy Angels for um, quite a long time. My son started kindergarten here and he's graduated from Holy Angels at this point. So they put you to work immediately as soon as you come here. So I got a lot of good friends up here. So whenever they need something, I'm here. I got it. Now I understand you're not actually Catholic. Is that right? No. What's your faith? I'm a Muslim. Okay, but you're still here and still working with them? Well, I, I like the work that they do up here at Holy Angels. I like okay. the stuff that they do for the community and I feel like somebody should be giving back to them. I've heard a lot about the singing voice of Rex Alexander's daughter, Catherine. 
Tell me about the choir. There's a great collection of kids, younger, and, and they're older. all unique. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> yes. yeah, Tell have, me about that. <laughs> they're from ranges maybe third grade until you know me, college. So it's a pretty large group to have. Right. And what effect do you think it has on the kids to be able to be a part of a choir? It has like an amazing effect. Amazing. Mm -hmm. I mean, academically, all the kids are succeeding. You know, everyone who's gone to high school and graduated from high school they're on to college you know it's an amazing record to have that's fantastic do you use the basement now at all well we have a liturgical dance group and we usually practice down there mm -hmm. and you know we have sometimes we have practices when we need the whole space so right yeah and so you were dancing on the broken concrete yes. before and <laughs> watching those walls and stuff it was horrible i would love for you if you could sing me something because your voice is absolutely incredible thank you thank could you, you sing something for me is Amazing Grace okay? Please. <laughs> Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that What's amazing is the spirit and the grace that the volunteers are bringing to themselves and their community by working together. Hey Jim. Yeah. What do you think about an open concept space? What do you mean? <laughs> okay, the thing is, is that we've got a great deal on the furniture, but it's at a warehouse out by the airport and nobody can find it. Are you kidding me? This stuff was supposed to be here hours ago. I know, and the kicker is, is that everything has to be completely set up, ready to go tomorrow morning before mass. Before mass? Yeah. Oh. Do you have a cell on here? Yeah. There you go. Expect the unexpected. Man, 5,000 square feet, people are gonna notice that there's no furniture. Hey, yeah, it's Catherine calling. We got a bit of a problem? Yeah, I'm looking at an empty room. Okay, so is that the west entrance? So there's two entrances. Is it the west side or the east side? If you come down the street, do you go left or right? Looks like a pretty fine piece of cabinetry, doesn't it? Let me show you a little secret. This door was actually ripped almost two inches too narrow. We would have had a huge gap in between the two, and we didn't have the materials to rip another one. So we cut this beveled strip to cover the gap, and it looks as if we designed it this way. Now all we need is a couple clasps, a couple handles, a little bit of stain, make sure it's plumb and level, and we're good to go. The furniture better come soon. The kitchen volunteers are getting ready for Sunday's meal. It's so good to see everybody working so hard together. We did have one man in here. He did all the basic cleaning, he and my daughter. She graduated last night, got a master's from Roosevelt University. She went to Holy Angels School, and she's still here. Well, after each mass, people come down to have breakfast. At least two to three hundred, I'm sure. But where is that furniture? Oh, sorry, wrong number. Okay, so they're on their way. I'm so glad that the crew finally found the warehouse. Yeah, you and me both. But you know what? This doesn't look like a lot of furniture for a room this size. Oh, trust me. This doesn't even scratch the surface. We've got a truck back there that's just filled with this. Oh, so we still have to unload the truck, unwrap everything, figure where everything goes? That's a lot of work. I know, and let me remind you, everything has to be in its place before mass in the morning. Oh, yeah. Hey, I think you can take a little look. Let's. It's Sunday morning and we're almost done. A few finishing touches, we are just in time.
today, since we have our, our friends today with us from Divine Restoration Crew, would you just stand up today? Stand up, stand up, stand up. Let's make them feel very, very welcome today. Thank you very much. I do want to thank, in a very, very special way, the, the man who really helped uh, coordinate this. Uh, when I heard about this, it was right after the, the funeral of his son. And uh, I went to Leroy and said, Leroy, uh, give me a hand on this, would you? And this man pitched in like this was his own project. Know that God is with you and that our love is with you always. Leroy and Teresa. to see what can be done when volunteers and local businesses donate so much for a good cause. This basement will now be an important addition to the church and the community. With space for elders to get together and for youth to come in off of the street. Isn't that just beautiful? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, uh, Leroy and Teresa, we wanted to dedicate this space to the memory of your son. Um, we want to thank you so much for everything that your family did. Okay? Thank you so much. He's here every time you come down here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wider, it is gorgeous. Well, this was a monumental challenge. I have to tell you, I was a little concerned we weren't going to finish. What with the furniture coming late and the bookcases. But those Holy Angels volunteers really came through big time. In a big space. It's mm -hmm. so nice to see the congregation enjoying breakfast after Mass. Yeah, let's join them. Before our next Divine Restoration.